this uh, this flu tube is about the continuity or conservation of mass concept that we didn't cover very well in lecture, so I wanted to go over it again right now. It does show up in the PowerPoint slides that Sandra went over, but it kind of gets thrown in at the end, so I thought I'd just go through it in a little more detail. So it's a pretty simple concept, and you're going to need it uh, all the way through the course. So let's let's uh, think about it hard here. So uh, here's the basic concept is that we have a mass in is got to be equal to mass out, right? That's not hard. And so we can uh, say that if we have a steady situation, the change in mass over time is equal to zero. And so that means that the rate of mass going in has to equal the rate of mass going out. Or in terms better for fluid mechanics, we have the density of fluid at point one, the velocity at one, and the area at one. So let's say you know this would be one here. And similarly, this would be 2, the density, velocity, and area at 2. So check those units. Make sure it comes out to be uh, mass per time units. So uh, there are several useful ways to express this mathematically. Um, so here's the mass coming in, the mass coming out, uh, as we said before. Uh, if density is constant, though, we can just say we just have no subscript here, so these two would cancel because they'd have the same density, right? And that basically means that velocity times area, which is equal to flow, is the same. Flow in equals flow out, which also makes sense, right? If it's just the same water coming in and going out, the flow in has to equal the flow out. And the density is the same on both sides, so you don't need to keep track of that. So you can write it like this, and you can make it as complex as you want. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what the diameters or the radius of the pipe is, that sort of thing. So it's a very useful way to, to write it, all these three. We'll use all these different expressions when we're working in problems. So uh, continuity is pretty useful in many problems, including, including Bernoulli problems. Here's a simple example. Let's say we have this tank that's constantly full. And we want to know the velocity at points 2 and 3. So you can see here the twist on this problem is that we've got uh, a fatter pipe here and a skinnier pipe here. So here's Bernoulli's. We know that these uh, the pressure, velocity, and elevation terms are equal to a constant in our viscosity-less world. Remember later we'll add some viscous forces and friction, but for now we don't have it. Uh, and then we can look at these three points. Let's call the top of the reservoir one, the, out, the outlet two, and the intermediate point three. So if we look between uh, points one and two, we can write Bernoulli for both sides. But as you'll see, uh, I've already crossed out the pressure terms here because it's atmospheric up here. And out here, right? They're both both uh, in contact with the atmosphere. And then I have, uh, if we define our datum down here at the bottom of the tank, we can just say that this guy's zero. Now, remember, when we have a tank that stays full all the time, and that's a steady situation, so that implies that there's some feed coming in that's the same as what's going out here, or it's just so big that the flow for the time we're watching it is not really changing the level of the tank. So either way, this top is not moving, and that's why we, uh, by definition, are saying that the velocity at 1 is equal to 0. So like we've seen before, for the free jet situation, if all we have left is this elevation, which we know is h, and that's equal to the velocity term on the right-hand side over here. And if we just move them around, there's kind of our free jet term. Remember from the lecture notes. Really hard to write, but here, I'm doing OK this time. So that's the velocity here at 2, which is just straight from Bernoulli. But then the trick is we don't have to do Bernoulli again if we want to know velocity here. We can just say, well, continuity, this is the same pipe, so whatever's coming in here 
and go, and going out here are the same, and I can go strictly by the geometry of the pipe. So V2 times A2 is equal to V3 times A3, and I can make that in terms of the cross-sectional area of the pipe, pi r squared, and V3, as you can see, is just the same as V2 corrected for by the ratio of the areas. So that's what we have so far on the Bernoulli and continuity, and I hope that makes sense. And remember to uh, uh, think hard about continuity. It's always a good, a good thing in your problem. It can help you to find some unknowns when you see things going through the same pipe, and you know that the flow has to be the same. So you maybe just need to change, change the velocity or change the well, based on the diameters of the pipe or vice versa. So make sure you use continuity whenever you can throughout the course.